This pitting, pitting against of each other of minority groups, especially in, with race and ethnicity, is nothing new. Uh, the white power establishment uh, does this all the time. Because in April 2010, I wrote a poem. And that poem is real like Tian Sheng Yu's head, hitting the cement ground and swelling beyond the 59 years of his life, real as the fists that sent him there. Real as teenagers Levante Drummer and Dominic Davis, the felony of their hands. I am black like them, black as I was when Natasha Harlins turned from Soon Ja Do, turned from the accusal of a Korean grocer, turned from the counter in Empire Liquor Store. But the gun hadn't yet spoken to her head and her already turned around body, 15-year-old body of Los Angeles, of highway and sequins, of gang signs and orange juice. She'd wanted to buy orange juice. Just 13 days earlier, there was the video that was a seedling and a grown thing too. Los Angeles police over one Man. Nineteen ninety one, away at college, I was black like that. The evidence, the verdict, its burnings and burials today. The evidence, the verdict. Stop and frisk. And what does it take to cooperate? Shrink into an apology, turn over your body, turn out your pockets be a right answer to questions they choose, be chosen. And what does it take to cooperate? Into an apology, shrink into an apology, turn over your body, be a right turn answer your to pockets. questions, turn out your pockets, they be a right choose. answer to questions, be a right answer be to chosen. questions, they choose, they choose, be chosen. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine let it shine let it shine let it shine. We console ourselves with black and whites of epic times, but how do we confess our alienation? Make today an epic time. Recognize kin, trace our blood ties as blood shed, colored as we are by circumstance and chromosome. I'm writing this with both eyes open, both hands on the keyboard, desperate to find you, searching like I am, refusing as I am. First saw the video, it didn't strike me as anything brand new because I ride Muni every single day. This incident has given us a renewed opportunity to make an ongoing commitment to one another. We are here to say that this is not just your issue, this is our issue. We have more strength together inter-ethnically 
and, and the stuff that divides us is gonna kill us. It's a lose-lose situation in the Muni. What happened? Right? It's not about who's fighting back against who. Race it is the issue. It is the fundamental issue because we live in a racist country. But I start with myself. When I see, when I hear my nephew calling an African American a black ghost, I shut him down. I say, you don't call that person that. I think we have to find some other way of dealing with these emotions. When I call you a broke down, slammy eyed ching chong ho, I'm not actually calling you. A broke down slanty eyed ching chong ho per se. Hmm. When you call me a, a bro, how you say the broke down slanty eyed ching chong ho? That's, that's too many words. How many words? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, this, wait, wait. The broke, the, wait, wait. One, two, three, four. That, that's how many were there? Wait, 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 that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven words! We're exclusive. The author of the column, Why I Hate Blacks. Last week we told you about the overtly racist column, which was published in San Francisco's Asian Week. At that point, the editor of the paper had apologized for publishing the column, and since then, he has also fired the writer, Kenneth Ng. But what made Ng write that column in the first place? Why does he say that he hates blacks? and whites, and even his fellow Asians. With me now, self-proclaimed Asian supremacist, Kenneth Ng. So, Mr. Ng, have you changed your mind? Well, no, I have no regrets at all. Uh, why do you hate blacks? Um, well, you know, just to be blunt, 90% of them usually walk up to me and call me, uh, you know, like, for instance, Ching Chong and stuff like that. I mean, I don't really give a damn, but, you know, I mean, you know, after a while, it gets pretty damn annoying. Um, and not to mention, they get so much uh, media attention. Paper Now on Judge Mattis. I was raised in the streets. There's black characters. Where's the Asians, he asks. It's a lineup, stupid. Victim number one, victim number two, victim number three. Rapist, drug addict, single mother, abused mother, big dick, women beating, smooth talking, no subject, verb agreement, cat calling, man dingo. So what happened when you got arrested? Show can dance, show can sing, chicken snack and weed smoking, Kool-Aid drinking, do rag wearing stereotype we like, like, no representation is better than this shit. Okay, okay, what about Castrated, micro dicked, overachieving, geek, wannabe, gangster, nail parlor, working, chicken fly, lice, white man, obsessed, submissive, scream at every thrust, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, cook and bring slippers, quiet, strength, perpetual, kung fu, shaolin, temple, foreigner, sidekick, we likey, likey. 1993. All the women in my family and me watching the Joy Luck Club, eyes red and narrowed with tears. It's a lineup, stupid. Victim number one, victim number two, victim number three. It's not the same, my nigga, I say. It's just not the same. Gone are the days when my heart was young and gay. Gone are my friends from the cotton fields away. Gone. You're a sap, Mr. Jack, to make a Yankee cranky. You're a sap, Mr. Jack, a 
fantastic Malcolm X smile and came out extending his hands. I grabbed it. I could hardly believe I was actually meeting this famous, already legendary Malcolm X. Then I blurted out something stupid. <laughs> I admire all you say, but I don't agree with you about something. What don't you agree with me about? I said, your harsh position on integration it was a stupid thing to say since he was a black nationalist. But he wasn't even upset. He was so cool, so open. He just said, I can't give you two-minute lectures on the pros and cons of integration right here. Come to my office. We can discuss it. I could hardly believe it. He was inviting me to his office to talk. I was on cloud nine. I kept thinking, wait till I tell Billy and the family. I'll bet they won't even believe that I actually talked to Malcolm.